Wonderful. Hello to all. It's wonderful to have you here. Um, welcome to uh, the virtual college fair. Um, we're going to go over just a couple of notes and then we're going to jump right in. Um, Matthew um, is my name. Um, I will serve as your host uh, for uh, the, uh, the night. Um, just a couple notes. Um, during this whole thing, our reps have wonderful things uh, to share with you. If you have anything that you would like to ask, the Q&A is turned on. Um, Pleat, my ask of you is to just type in if you would like to ask one school something um, to put the name of that school, or if you would like to ask the whole group, just put this is for uh, the whole group and we will uh, make sure that what you have to ask um, is answered. Um, during this time, your microphones and cameras are turned off. So the only job you have is to sit back um, and to listen to everything that is said during this time and to take all the notes that you may need. Um, this is a wonderful and a big fair. Um, so please sign up for more um, sessions. There is one more after this, um, if you haven't done so. Um, just a note too, that we do film this um, and the link to it will be at the same place where you signed up. Um, in about um, a, a week's time. So if you'd like to go back, take more notes, um, really listen to more of what any of the reps say for the night, um, that is something that you can do. Just a note as to what schools you will hear from, we are right here in session B13. Um, like I said, there's many more um, for the rest of the night. So if you'd like to sign up for more, please feel free. Um, with that being said, I will get out of the way um, and introduce our first school, Earlham College. Thank you, Matthew. Um, good afternoon or good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Elijah Wilson Thomas. Um, I am the admission counselor rep here for Earlham College. I graduated here in 2018, um, majored in math education, played basketball here, and I'm from North Carolina. So a lot of these schools are obviously from the South. Um, and if you guys are from North Carolina, um, shout out to you guys. Um, I enjoyed my time here at Earlham. Um, I feel like it was definitely a place that I could thrive, grow as a man, grow as a person, um, grow as a ball player, all the above. So if we have any student athletes in here, um, and if anybody ever wants to ask me questions about my perspective, how it is being from the South, moving out to the Midwest, to Richmond, Indiana, um, definitely feel free to put um, any questions or anything in the chat or I will give you guys my information, or if you already have it, just feel free to email me. Um, I only have a lim limited amount of time, so I'm gonna just go ahead and cut right to the chase. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So although, you know, I would rather be there in person to give you guys this um, kind of, you know, travel piece um, in person, we can't do that obviously because of COVID. So this right here is just a brief synopsis of what Earlham really is about. Um, so the top, as you can see here, um, we have an education for good. And I feel like for good would definitely last you guys for a, la for a lifetime. That's kind of our slogan here. Um, I feel like a lot of students who come to Earlham, they leave out better than the way they came in. Um, and I'll kind of touch on that a little bit later um, in, the, in the presentation. But as, as you can see right here, I'll talk a little bit about what Earlham is about as far as its background. So we were founded in 1847. We are a Quaker school, but obviously you don't have to be a Quaker to attend here. Very diverse um, in religion. So, you know, Quakers, Christianity, Buddhism, Judaism, Islam, whatever you guys believe in, feel free to come as you are. Um, definitely, you know, diverse in ethnicity as well. Um, around 24% um, domestic student of color and then 23% international student rate. So if you guys would ever come on campus for a tour, um, for a, maybe an overnight visit, you definitely see a lot of diversity on campus. And I feel like that's a great way to, you know, have, have a great learning experience. You don't wanna be at a predominantly white institution or a historically black college in university. I feel like they kind of get what the world will really be like after college. You have to go to somewhere where it has a lot of diversity that way you can expand your way of learning, expand your way of thinking and just see how other people live on a day to day basis. So if you see in this little paragraph right here, um, you'll chart your own four year journey through the liberal arts here on um, integrating your academic major with transformative learning experiences like research off campus study internships and leadership development. Um, if you look at this first sentence, you will chart your own four year journey. We do have over 40 different majors and minors here at Earlham and on the bottom slide after this page, you'll be able to see the majors that we have. Um, 
but creating your own journey. Um, this is what I did uh, for my personal experience. I majored in math education, like I said, and if you were to look back a couple of years ago, we don't we didn't have an education track. Um, we just had strictly math. And for me, when I was a student here, I really didn't have a strong background in math. Um, so I talked to the registrar's office. I explained to them my situation because honestly, I almost have to withdraw from the institution just because I didn't feel like it was a reason to pay to fail. Um, but they said, you already went through three years. You're almost at your four year mark. I feel like there's no reason for you to just leave and go to a community college and, and kind of you know finish out there. So they helped me create my own major. And that's not that's just not to say that can happen for me. It can happen for every student. So if you guys were to come to Earlham and you kind of want something specific in a track that you want to go for, definitely talk to the registrar's office. They'll be able to get you set up with whatever courses that you need to take in order to fulfill that major. Um, I didn't have to take an extra semester. I didn't have to take an extra year. I graduated on time. So that really, for me, that's really kind of let me know that Earlham really was a place that really cares for you, not only as a as a student, but as a person, because they want you to have a successful track um, while you're here. And as you can see, I just explained what that was from this part right here. See, as you could assign, design your own major. Like I said, these are the different majors that we have here. So students, you guys do have the opportunity to either major, double major, major and minor in any of these um, subjects that we do have for you guys. So whatever you guys wanna do, the education really is in your hands. So if you were to go down here, you would be able to see, this is where we're located right here at this yellow dot. We're located in Richmond, Indiana. Um, Indianapolis is about an hour and 15 minutes um, away from us. Dayton, Ohio right here is about 40 minutes away. And then if you see Cincinnati is about an hour and a half. So if you guys ever was to go out of the airports or just travel to cities, these are kind of the three areas that a lot of students go for. I'd recommend Dayton since it is 40 minutes away. So you can, guys can just go there get a flight. And if you need to go back home, you could definitely do that. Um, freshmen are allowed to have cars on campus. So you guys can have friends that will have cars maybe, or if you were to have a car, you guys can go out and travel and explore, you know, Richmond or different surrounding cities around us. Um, we are, we do have 600 acres of land or 800, 800 acres, I should say. Um, and 600 of that, as you can see right here, is woods, streams, ponds, anything that you like to see as far as nature-wise. We definitely do have that here. So the rest of the 200 is main campus, which you have your dining hall, your dormitories, um, different you know research areas, different things like that. Um, our weight room facilities, our gym area. So that is all located in that 200 um, acre area. So beyond the classroom, oh, am I running out of time, Matt? All right, the um, last thing I'll probably say about um, this right here, as far as Earlham, what I feel like would definitely sell us is our Earlham Advantage, our Epic Advantage internship opportunities for students. So basically you guys will have a funded research experience throughout your four years. It's around $5,000 that you're able to have, which is yours. No other student has access to this amount of money and every student on campus has access to it. So you guys can use that $5,000. You'll have a career coach who will help you out. You can travel the world, you can stay within the states, whatever you need to help you out with your internship opportunities. You can use that $5,000 for food, transportation, um, lodging, whatever else you might need that'll help you out. Um, and then, you know, our regular decision deadline is March 1st. So if you guys are interested, definitely get those out um, and, and into us so that way we can get you a decision before that deadline. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, I'll put my email in the chat, or if you guys already have it, that is great too. Just email me. I love the Zoom. I feel like that's very personable. So thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Wonderful. With that being said, our next school you will hear from tonight is um, Augusta University. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Shereen Clement. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at Augusta University. And of course, I am here to talk to you guys about Augusta University and in six minutes, which I'm really panicked about. So hopefully I'll get that done. So Augusta University was founded in 1828, um, located in Augusta, Georgia, obviously. Um, we have around 9,274 students and about 5,500 of those are undergraduate students. 
We're also one of the four research universities in the state of Georgia, and I don't know how many of y'all in here are from Georgia, but if you are, you're familiar with the idea that there are four research universities in Georgia, which just means that we have a high level of academic rigor and a lot of great opportunities for research that students can take on that impact their lives, but also the lives of our state. Um, if you watched the news at all over the last year and you saw Georgia's COVID response, you might have noticed the Augusta University logo always on the podium or in the background of press conferences, and it's because Augusta University actually created the first COVID test that was used in Georgia. So a lot of groundbreaking things happening on our campus and definitely a great place to learn. Um, here you can just see some of our freshman class specs. Our freshman classes are usually around 1,000 to 1,050 students. Overwhelmingly, our students are from Georgia with a large percentage being within from South Carolina, which is right across the bridge from us, and a decent split in terms of male to female. And our retention rate from freshman year to sophomore year is about 70%, which I'm pretty proud of. Um, in terms of Augusta University's ability to um, recruit, but also graduate our students. Um, so Augusta University, of course, like I said, located in Augusta, and Augusta is a great place. It's actually the second largest and second city, oldest city in the state of Georgia, sorry. So of course you have your college town vibe when you're on campus, but you still have a full city too. So there's a really cute historic downtown area that I like um, to go for restaurants, a local restaurant specifically, cute shops, things like that. There's also a shopping district. So there's a mall in Augusta, there's an Apple store, there's a Target, there's every chain restaurant you could ever think of. And then also fun outdoorsy things. So if you like hiking, canoeing, kayaking, we have the Savannah River Canal right along um, our campus. So you can borrow equipment from our recreation center, take it out there, check out the area. Also on that map in this page, you can also see that Augusta is about 150 miles away from lots of major cities in Georgia, but also the surrounding area. So although it's not a commuter campus, you can get home easily, you can travel around easily and get to see not only your town and where you live as a college student, but also other areas around you. Looking at a little bit of academics, you can see our top undergraduate majors do tend to fall a lot in the health sciences area. And Augusta is widely associated with the health sciences field. We do have the only public medical school in Georgia and the only dental school at all in Georgia. Cell and molecular biology is our number one major, as well as kinesiology. We have the largest, oldest nursing program in the state. So a lot of great things going on in that field. But we also have a really amazing computer science and cybersecurity program on our campus. We have an entire part of our campus dedicated to cybersecurity. It's called the Nathan Deal Center for Innovation. And one of the past governors of Georgia actually started that campus. And it's something that's really thriving and becoming one of our most popular majors on our campus actually. So definitely have a lot of opportunity with academics there, especially with our small class sizes of about 23 students and a 16 to one faculty, student to faculty ratio. When it comes to student life and engagement, I think that Augusta University students are extremely involved on campus. We have over 170 student organizations. That's Greek life, professional organizations, religious organizations, just for fun organization, intramural sports, club sports. So really running the gamut of anything that you want to do, you can find at Augusta. If you did it in high school, you probably can find it at Augusta, but a little bit bigger and better. Um, we also have living learning communities. So students who choose to live on campus, which we do not require our freshmen to live on campus, but most of them do. We have two freshman residence halls, can opt to live in a living learning community with students who have similar career goals, majors or interests as them. So lots of different ways to be involved. Um, one thing that I've been really proud of with Augusta University through the pandemic is how they've still been really active with students. So. Um, it's about to be homecoming. Two weeks ago was Greek week and the start of um, sorority fraternity recruitment. Uh, the first week of classes, we had drive-in movies every day. So students could still, you know, get to see each other, get to communicate, get to have that um, community feel, but still stay socially distanced and safe. So they've been working really hard to make sure that we still have a great campus environment. Um, last but not least, and I'm not sure my time is because I forgot to start my timer. We do... Um, have an application on both Common App and the Georgia Futures application. If you're from Georgia, you know about Georgia Futures. If not, it's okay. Common App and Georgia Futures are the same application, same app fee, same questions, just two different places to um, house those applications. Our deadline for fall 2020 admissions is gonna be May 1st. So that application is still open. Students who are looking into 2022 in the future, of course, our early action deadline is November 15th. And then we move to rolling admissions after that. You can see our average SAT, ACT, and test um, GPAs there. Of course, this year for fall 2020, one, we are test optional along with the rest of the university system of Georgia. Moving forward, we have not been really notified about uh, fall 2022 admits. So please keep an eye out for that. Um, I'm gonna post in the chat a link to meet your admissions counselor so you can kind of know who works with who. You can always reach out to them for updates about fall 2022. But for us, you just apply online, send us your transcript, 
um, officially from your high school, test scores if we're requiring them, or if you just want to send them because you've taken them. And then we do review that information and then send out admissions decisions. There are some specialty programs at um, Augusta University, such as our direct admit medical, direct admit medical, direct admit dental, and direct admit nursing program, as well as our honors program that requires some additional admission steps, but that's way too much to get into in six minutes. So please definitely um, stay abreast of those if those are things that you're interested in. Uh, last but not least, just here's our contact email, admissions at augusta.edu, if you just want to email us generally and find out about AU. We do still have on-campus visits every weekday at 10 and 2, so you can come to visit us on campus. We limit them to eight people at a time, so we can keep you super spread out and safe, and then we have a virtual visit every day if you want to see this, but like three times the amount of information, you can do that, and I'm always giving those on the weekdays. So thanks so much. I'm going to go ahead and post in the chat that Meet Your Counselor page. Hope you all have a great night. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, with that, I just want to make a note. Um, once again, if folks have anything to ask, please use um, the Q&A. Just note which school you'd like to ask. Um, the next school you will hear from tonight is University of New Haven. Hey guys, so first of all, I'm just going to really quickly pop in the chat box on um, the registration link. If any of you guys are interested in receiving further information, feel free to fill out that link. Um, they're also sending swag packages to everyone who registers. So um, do with that information what you like. Um, I'm going to share my screen right now and get into this presentation. Just move my window box over here. Okay, so one of the first things that I like to bring up when talking about the University of New Haven is some of our rankings and recognitions, which you can see down here. We were actually ranked as one of the um, top 386 best colleges in the country by the Princeton Review um, for another consecutive year in a row. So we're very proud of that ranking. We're also ranked one of the best colleges by the US News and World Report, again, for another year. So just some rankings and recognitions that we're really proud of. So we have about 5,000 under, full-time undergraduate students on campus. So that puts us in the small to medium-sized campus range. What that means for you is walking to class every day, you're going to see um, a familiar face, you're gonna see a friend, but we're large enough, we're walking to class every day, you're also going to meet someone new every day that you're on campus. So we have over 100 majors and programs, um, which you can kind of see over here. Um, this is actually a full list of all of our undergraduate programs that we have on campus. So there really is something for everyone. Um, something that we have that's um, pretty unique is that we start you taking classes um, directly in your major from your first semester. So for example, for our students that are interested in studying marine biology, right from your first semester, you're gonna go out with your classmates onto the Long Island Sound. Um, you're gonna put on your 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 outfit, whatever the, the marine biologists wear to get in the water. Um, you're going to collect your samples and you're going to come back, go in the lab and do your um, do your research. So the reason why we do that is because we want you to quite literally get your feet wet right away and know if this is if this is what you can see yourself doing or if maybe you want to change gears, you want to switch majors. So you're going to know right away um, whether that's the right major for you. So coming down here, just a little bit about location. We are located in West Haven, Connecticut. Um, so we are sandwiched right in between New York City and Boston, about an hour and a half from New York City and about two hours from Boston. And we have the train stations that will get you right there. Um, our students will not only take day trips, you know, on the weekends with their friends out into the cities, but also take advantage of how easy it is to get um, out into the cities and find internships over there as well. We're also just about five to 10 minutes from Long Island Sound. So a lot of our upperclassmen will actually, you know, get beach houses and just make that commute onto campus. Um, being in West Haven, Connecticut, I know you guys are probably thinking, why is it called University of New Haven if we're in West Haven? And the reason for that is because we were actually founded in 1920 on Yale's campus in New Haven and then moved over to West Haven in um, around 1960 to have the suburban area to be able to expand the campus. Okay, coming down here. So I do just want to mention this number down here. So 97%, this is a very significant number. 97% of our 2019 graduating class within six months of graduating found a job directly in their field of study or went on to graduate school. What's very significant about this number is that we don't count students who might have majored in something and then went and got a job in something not related to their major. This is only counting the students who got a job directly in their, um, in their field of study. 
Um, we have our Career Development Center, which you can kind of see a little bit about up here. Um, our Career Development Center was actually ranked in the top 20 in the country. Um, and the reason for that is, be is because they're not just working with you throughout um, your senior year. They're gonna be working with you throughout all four years to make sure, A, are you in the right major that's aligned with the goals that you have um, once you graduate? They're going to help you find an internship and make sure that it's one that, you know, is, is um, has something to do with your major, not just any internship. You know what I mean? They're going to help you prepare for interviews and stuff like that. They're going to make sure your resume is polished. They're really just going to be with you every step of the way to make sure that you're the perfect candidate to get whatever job or whatever graduate school it is that, that you're looking for once you graduate. Um, just a little bit about sports. We are part um, of the NCAA Division II in the Northeast 10 Conference. We have 17 varsity athletic teams. Um, we also have club sports. So for the, for the students that maybe want to continue or want to play a sport in college but don't want the time commitment um, of being on the varsity team, you can definitely join a club sport. Um, they still compete, still travel regionally. Again, it's just less of that, less of that rigor than being on the varsity team. And you can kind of see um, all of the club sports that we offer here. And then of course we have intramural sports as well, which is you know less competing and just more um, for fun um, with your friends. On the right hand side over here, you'll see a little bit about dorming. Um, so 90% of our first year students actually live on campus. I always recommend to you know live on campus your first year. That's the year when you're gonna get involved in all the clubs and you're gonna make those friendships that are gonna last you those four years and, and possibly further than that. After um, the first year, about 65% of our students live on campus, and then the other 35%, like I was talking about, will you know rent an apartment or get a beach house off campus and just commute right onto campus. We also have some university-sponsored apartments, which you can kind of see in this picture right here. Um, it's about a stone throw away from campus, so you literally can just like walk um, onto campus if you were interested in, in, in getting an apartment as well. I think I only have like 30 seconds left. Um, so I just want to really quickly get into the application process. Um, we are part of the Common App. So if you guys were um, interested in applying, it's directly through the Common App. Um, I also want to just, you know, really quickly point out if you guys didn't um, fill out financial aid or if you guys are juniors, definitely look into doing the FAFSA. Um, I tell all my students, make sure you fill out the FAFSA because you never know, you know, what you're going to get. And it is unique, unique for every single family. Um, we are test optional as well. So when you're applying, if you don't want to submit your test scores, you certainly don't have to. It won't hurt your application in any way. And lastly, I just want to point out that we do offer academic scholarships, which is not a separate application. Um, you're automatically considered for scholarships once you submit the common application. I think I'm all out of time. So I'm going to um, stop sharing my screen now and pass the mic. But thank you guys so much for listening to me. I'm going to pop my email in the chat box as well. Fantastic. Thank you so much. All right, everyone. The next school you will hear from tonight um, is University of San Diego. Thank you, Matthew. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Scott Yonner. I'm one of the senior mission counselors at the University of San Diego. Share a little bit about our university here. Let me get it going. There we go. So USC was founded in 1949. We are a, a Catholic intellectual or we are a contemporary Catholic institution. The only religious requirement we have is one lower division, one upper division, religious theology study. Outside of that, we do not require students to go to mass, nor do we require them to be a part of the campus ministry. About 42% of our students either identify with the Catholic faith, the remainder of our students either identify with a different faith tradition or no faith at all. So um, at USD, we really do believe that your spiritual journey is that, is your spiritual journey. So we don't have any other requirements uh, other than the one lower and upper division religious and theology study. So we are what they call a mid-sized institution. We have about 5,900 undergraduates, about 2,900 graduate law students on campus. About 48% of our students are out of state. 9% um, of our students are international. The remainder of our students are from the state of California, pretty evenly divided between Northern and Southern California. A couple of our accolades, we are ranked sixth most beautiful campus in the nation. Uh, so if you ever have the opportunity to visit the campus, or if you see the pictures, it's really an incredibly beautiful place to be able to be a part of. As well with that, we offer 42 majors. One thing that's unique about USD is that regardless of the major that you put on your application, everybody comes in undeclared. One, if admitted and you choose to attend USD, you have up until your fourth semester to declare your major, double major, major minor, major double minor, 
and you can still get the course after you graduate in four years and you're guaranteed any of those majors. So there's no additional application uh, requirements that go into it. Uh, you can declare that first semester if you know what you wanna do or you can wait till that fourth semester. I have a daughter who is a current senior at the University of San Diego. She knew second semester she wanted to be a, a teacher. So she, she's a liberal studies with a minor in communications. But it gives you that opportunity. The only exception to that is with our engineering major, and it is a four and a half year long program by design. Um, and with you, with the engineering program, we are ranked 13th in the nation. So an incredibly amazing program that we offer at USD. Our average class size is 22, and we cap all of our courses at 40. So my daughter's largest class has been 33, and her smallest class has been 12. The other great thing is that all of our courses are not only taught by professors, all of those professors have weekly office hours as well. So they're super accessible to the students, uh, as well as very collaborative as far as the engagement. And then we are the youngest private institution ranked in the top 100. And then uh, our student to faculty ratio is 13 to one. We do have undergrad student research. Some majors like any of our science majors, you're, you're guaranteed a minimum of 100 um, under, undergraduate research hours. So this is led with the, the primary research um, director, usually one of our professors, if that research is published and their students are co-authored with it as well. So it is a great opportunity outside of the science majors. We also have undergrad research opportunities for the other majors. Sometimes that can be a little bit more competitive because it's not part of the degree plan. But once again, with all of our sciences, it is part of the degree plan. We also have a great honors program at USD. Recommend going on our site to be able to look at a little bit more information about the honors program. And then with our first year experience, uh, we take a lot of pride in this. We do require students to live on campus for the first two years. That first year is in living, learning communities. Um, the good thing about that is it's really a great opportunity for students to connect with students from all different majors, but sort of have the same type of interest. Um, typically they range from Advocacy, so there's an advocate, collaborate, cultivate, illuminate, and innovate. So advocate would be like for ad advocacy, stuff like that. Uh, cultivate would be more like with sustainability and stuff like that. So you sort of figure out what you sort of connect with and then being able to apply for that LLC. But that first year experience is really a great opportunity for students to connect as well as you'll, you'll have a living learning class that first semester. That professor will actually be your academic advisor and um, our students are incredibly successful. Last year, we had a return rate of about 92.5% from our first year to second year students. So once they're into USD, it really allows them to be able to connect and to be able to create that home very quickly. As far as clubs and organizations, we have over 180 clubs and organizations on campus. We have 17 division one athletic programs. We're part of the West Coast Conference. Our football team is part of the Pioneer League. And then we have over 50 club and intramural sports. So there really is something for everyone to be a part of on campus with over 30 plus cultural organizations on campus, 65 honor professional societies. Uh, we also have nine sororities and nine fraternities on campus. There is really a lot of opportunities for students to engage something to be able to really find that additional places where you have that connection with like-minded people as well. And then <clears throat> we're also one of 40, Five campuses worldwide that's a, considered a Shoka change maker campus. Uh, this is a really important component to us at USD, um, as well as it ties into our study abroad opportunities. We have over uh, 80 programs in 30 different countries when it comes to our study abroad opportunities. And the great thing is you can do a semester abroad, a year abroad, and still graduate in four years. Um, application deadlines is December 15th, though we are still accepting applications for fall 2021. We are common app exclusive regular decision. As far as tests, we are test optional, but this year we're test blind and more than likely we will probably be test blind next year as well. With this, this is just sort of a snapshot of what our um, incoming class for 2021 look like, uh, the range of GPA and stuff like that. And then other than that, our marriage scholarships range from 18 to 25,000, top 40%. Um, automatically receive merit. And if you have any additional information, I will be texting my, or putting my email address in the chat. Feel free to shoot me an email or you can also um, put a question in the Q&A. With that being said, thank you so much for your time and I will stop sharing my screen. Wonderful, thank you so much. So many great 
pictures all night of beautiful sunny quads. I really wish I wasn't experiencing a snowstorm right now. <laughs> um, our next school we will hear from tonight um, is Virginia Commonwealth University. So thank you so much uh, for having me here. Um, I am oops, sorry about that. Wrong. Uh, can you see my screen? My presentation looks good. Awesome, awesome. So we're just gonna load that up here. Um, but my name is Robert Davison. I'm an admissions counselor with Virginia Commonwealth University. Uh, I'm just gonna start off with a little bit of history. Um, we have one of the more confusing logos because of our 1838 date. Our technical founding date is actually 1968. Um, that is when the medical college and the Richmond Professional Institute were merged into one larger university. So if you think of VCU, uh, we are a large very urban university. Um, and we have two main campuses, the Monroe Park campus, which is where the majority of undergraduate students are going to be taking their classes. And then the Medical College of Virginia, um, that is mostly pre-professional uh, students taking their classes there. In terms of Richmond, Virginia, uh, it is an awesome location. I'm a little biased because I've lived here my whole life, but it is a very central location, about two hours away from everything, two hours away from the mountains, the beach, DC, even though with traffic to DC can get a little bit crazy. Um, we're still very close to DC. We're very outdoor friendly. We actually have had over 550 acres of James River Park system. Um, we also have a lot of opportunity in the city. Um, there are eight Fortune 500 companies headquartered in Richmond, 11 Fortune 1000 companies. And Richmond is very small business friendly. Uh, VCU is a big part of that. We actually have over 150 different community partnerships as well. And then in terms of uh, just kind of how things will look normally, um, right now we are doing a virtual hybrid method, but as things do get back to normal here, um, Usually, even though we're a large university, again, we have a little bit over 30,000 students enrolled, a little over 24,000 undergraduate. Um, we actually have an 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio and an average class size of about 27 students per classroom. Um, so when you first enroll, if you are taking more prerequisite classes, those might be your larger classroom sizes. They tend to cap off at around 200 students, so nothing too crazy. But as you get more involved into those major related classes, that's really where those smaller classroom sizes come into play. Um, so you do kind of get the best of both worlds. Uh, you do get that 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio, but you're in a university that has almost 200 a thousand alumni uh, to it. So it is a very well-known, very large uh, research university. In terms of what we look for uh, GPA test score wise, uh, now we are test optional this year. We haven't made that decision yet for next year. Um, however, we will update our website as soon as that decision is made. Um, but we are holistic in our review process. You've probably heard that term before. We will just there's no minimum that you need to apply. Um, we're gonna look at everything on your application, GPA trends, letters of recommendation, um, what you're doing in and out of the classroom. Um, but uh, the middle 50% of our students will have between a uh, 3.39 to 4.06 GPA applying. If you do turn, choose to turn in uh, either your SAT or your ACT scores, middle 50% SAT is going to be around a 1060 um, to 1250. Middle 50% ACT will be about a 22 to 27 um, ACT score. There are some programs that have different admission standards or College of Engineering, School of Business, and then also School of the Arts will have more of a talent-based portion. Um, for those specific programs, I still would encourage you to apply directly to those programs. If you the decision is not favorable from those programs, there are ways of being reviewed as an undergraduate major. So you don't have anything to lose by applying directly to those programs. Um, in terms of some application deadlines, November 1st, if you apply through the common application by or before November 1st, um, you will be automatically eligible for any of the merit-based scholarships uh, that is 
typically really easy to do because again, you just have to fill out the common application and send out your information to us before November 1st. Um, if you apply by January 15th, um, that's our regular decision priority deadline. We will have a decision by or before April 1st. Now that does not mean say if you're applying in October that you have to wait until April 1st, we will try to get you those decisions as soon as possible. However, if you are applying by that deadline, you are guaranteed to have your decision again by the April 1st date. Um, and also uh, the final thing I'll mention is we're rolling admission. So if you're a senior, you see that January 15th date, do not panic. Um, we will still review applications on a rolling admissions basis for students. Um, we just don't have that guaranteed decision deadline. Um, we have over 68 different uh, major programs uh, for you to apply to as well. Um, and uh, as a couple of other really quick things, since we are right in the heart of the city, I know that can be overwhelming sometimes. However, we are a part of the GRTC bus system that will take you anywhere around the city of Richmond. Um, that is gonna be free for students. Um, we are right by the Richmond Airport as well. So uh, th there is still a lot of opportunity uh, for you to come here, um, for you to explore a city and kind of be in that urban environment. Um, but that is about it for my presentation and I'll go ahead and share my contact information here. Wonderful, thank you. All right, um, last uh, but certainly not least, um, you will hear from the University of uh, Alabama. All right, thank you all for joining me. I'm gonna go ahead and start my timer. So my name is Kaylee Havens. I'm the Interim Assistant Director of Admissions for Regional Recruitment here at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Get our slides to work. All right, UAB is an urban campus. We're located in the heart of Birmingham, Alabama, and our campus spans 100 city blocks, but our undergraduate campus really only spans about 19 city blocks, and we're considered a mid-sized institution. So that means that we have just over 22,500 current students with a little less than 14,000 undergraduate students. We're known for our experiential learning opportunities and more than half of our students participate in research each year. And you can start as early as your freshman year. That's given us the title as a tier one research institution. And we really hold that near and dear to our hearts. We also own and operate five hospitals on our campus, including a cancer research hospital, a children's hospital, a level one trauma hospital and a VA hospital. And UAB's hospital is actually the third largest public hospital in the country. With the growth in Birmingham, which I wasn't able to touch on before, but the city is constantly growing. Um, we've seen a really large rise in the business community that's come to Birmingham, Alabama. And with that, we've been able to grow a lot of great partnerships. So we're a founding partner of Innovation Depot, which is the largest small business incubator in the South. And with that, we've been able to produce 60 CEOs of their own company by the time they graduate as students from UAB. So we're really proud of that accomplishment and our students are getting this real world experience that they can take take um, back into the field. So I mentioned our hospitals, um, no surprise or most well known for our health sciences, but we have other incredible degrees as well. So our College of Arts and Sciences is home to our joint school of medicine programs, including our newest major of cancer biology, but this also houses psychology, criminal justice, digital forensics, our Collat School of Business opened a brand new building in 2018, and this is home to your general business and marketing degrees, but we do have unique degrees such as industrial, industrial distribution with a concentration in medical and supply distribution. Our School of Education produced six out of the past nine Alabama State Teachers of the Year, and this is where we hold our kinesiology program. So if you've ever wanted to be an exercise science teacher or an athletic trainer, you can actually graduate with your degree and a teaching certificate through our School of Education. We offer six engineering programs, including biomedical, civil, electrical, material, mechanical, and our newest degree of engineering design, and all of these have a fifth year master's option. Our School of Health Professions is home to our healthcare management and biomedical sciences degrees. This is a really popular degree if a student wants to do research and medicine. 
And our School of Public Health focuses on awareness and prevention, and it's a popular program for students who want to go through pre-med, also including a fifth year's master's program. One of my favorite is our School of Nursing. We are ranked top 15 in the country for nursing, and we offer a Dean's Nursing Scholars Program. So if you have a 3.2 GPA, a 25 ACT, or a 1210 SAT, you can actually be accepted into our School of Nursing as a freshman. Another popular program we offer is our Honors College. Over one third of our student population participates in this, and you'll actually be automatically invited if you have a 28 ACT, a 1320 SAT, or, and a 3.5 GPA. This will automatically accept you into our personalized pathway, and you can apply into three separate pathways. One of those is a STEM pathway, a global and community leadership pathway, and our university honors pathway as well. This does require a separate application and an interview process. And I love to share these photos. It kind of makes me sad because obviously this is pre-COVID. You don't see any masks on any of these students' faces, um, but we do have a very strong and thriving student life here at UAB. We have study abroad that's offered on every single continent, 18 student, uh, student one, sorry, division one athletic programs, um, very active Greek life. We have 26 Greek organizations, a student government and over 300 plus clubs and organizations. So a lot that you can do as a student. To touch on our application, you can still apply online for fall 2021. Um, we have extended our deadline through June 1st so that students have the ability to actually um, still make the application due to COVID. All we need is a $40 application fee, your high school transcript, and your ACT or SAT test scores. We have chosen to stay test optional through fall and summer 2021. And we are offering guaranteed scholarships for both in-state and out-of-state students based on your GPA and test scores. Or if you apply test optional, we'll use your GPA in combination with your strength of curriculum to determine this level. Now I'd like to touch on visits. We do have a link here and I'll provide this in the chat, but we'd love to have you guys come see us. You can also follow us on social media to see some Instagram lives. And then I've inserted my information along with our link where you can connect with other counselors specific to your state and territory. Thank you guys for your time and I hope you all have a great night. Thank you so much. Um, we had, and thank you once again to all of our wonderful reps um, talking about their schools. Um, we heard so many wonderful things that we went right up until our time. Um, I'm going to bring up just a little wrap up screen. Um, as folks finish putting stuff in the chat, taking down your notes, any Q&A um, wrap up that you might have um, as I say this. But thank you once again, the reps who gave their time to us during this and thank you to the students who joined us. Um, just um, a couple notes, um, as this screen closes out, a survey will pop up. If you could fill that out, that would be, that would be fantastic. Um, sign up for more. Um, sessions just like this. There's one more left during this fair. Um, as you can probably see, they are full with wonderful things to learn about all of these schools. Um, like I said, at the start of this, we did record this. Um, the link to that will be at the same link where you signed up in about a week's time. Um, so you can go back, you can look at your notes, um, you can see anything that you might need um, to look back at once again, as you are leaning into the joy of finding the right school for you. All right, folks, once again, thank you so much. Um, that ends our time. Um, have a wonderful night, be safe and be well.